another important topic in the genetics is the coupling and repulsion hypothesis proposed by the Bateson and Punnett from their uh, fascinating experiment on the Lathyrus odoratus, the sweet pea plant. Sweet pea plant, Lathyrus odoratus is different from the Physum sativum of Mendel. In this coupling and repulsion hypothesis, actually this is this is one type of inheritance pattern the genes located in the parental chromosomes can be inherited to the next generation by the coupling and repulsion hypothesis according to the Bateson and Punnett. in another video i have discussed about the independent assortment and linkage in this video mainly i am focusing on how do the genes are coupled with each other how the genes are repelling with each other what are the results of coupling and repulsion uh, processes what are the conclusions but before starting this coupling and repulsion hypothesis the main discussion i would like to compare this coupling and repulsion hypothesis with the independent assortment and linkage because the ultimate question is how do genes located on the parental chromosomes can be inherited to the next generation. Mendel has answered this question with the independent assortment that is the genes are alleles located on the chromosomes are parents involved in the independent assortment and form the new type of genetic recombinations in the next generation. That was the beauty of independent assortment. But whereas in the linkage by the TH Morgan the genes located on one chromosome hold with each other, linked with each other or sometimes those genes if they are present on different chromosomes they are unlinked genes these linked genes enter into the same gamete unlinked genes enter into different gametes in that pattern the genes present in the parental organism could be inherited to the next generation means according to the linkage there is no crossing over no new type of genetic recombinations this linkage and independent assortment are discussed in another videos in detail the links were pasted in the description box you can watch those videos after completing this coupling and repulsion hypothesis these three are important in the genetics because in some organisms on some chromosomes some of the genes or alleles are following this independent assortment some genes are inherited by following this coupling and repulsion hypothesis, some are linked and unlinked genes are there. Genesis are following these three types of uh, uh, hypothesis and laws to map the genes, gene mapping, pedigree analysis, crossing over and everything, applications in the genetics. So these three are considering now. So but we can say that uh, no one is 100 percent. Independent assortment is not 100 percent because all the genes are not involving in the crossing over. Coupling repulsion and linkage are also not 100 percent because all the genes are not linked, not coupled, not repelled. Some are involving in the crossing over and forming the new type of genetic recombinations. This all scientists framed those theories by taking the majority of the organisms from their experiments. So majority is taken into consideration. So now I am sticking to the coupling and repulsion hypothesis. This is the principle of coupling and repulsion hypothesis. Every concept has a principle. Uh, at the beginning of every video, I will show the principle of it. If you learn the principle, you can understand the entire concept. So after completing this discussion also, you can prove only this principle only. Total discussion also revolve around this principle. This is the principle of coupling. Two dominant or two recessive alleles located on one chromosome or same chromosome, they couple with each other because they are attracting with each other. So they would they would like to love and hold with each other, enter into the same gamete. Means if two dominant genes or two recessive genes located on same chromosome they love with each other they hold together and enter into the same gamut they don't want to hate they don't want to divide that is coupling but repulsion hypothesis is two dominant or two recessive alleles located on two different chromosomes repel or distract with each other that is nothing but hating with each other then they enter into the different gametes so if two dominant alleles 
are two recessive alleles located on different chromosomes they are repelling with each other hating together and enter into the different gametes that is coupling and repulsion hypothesis what is happening in the coupling we will see then we will go for the next repulsion in the coupling hypothesis the ratio is 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 what is this we will see a double dominant parent is taken double recessive parent this double dominant parent blue or purple color flowers capital R or capital R indicating the long pollen grains so these two are the dominant characters contrastingly the double recessive parent is containing smaller smaller with red color flowers this is recessive character so capital R is dominant on small R so small R was small R also recessive character which is indicating the round pollen grain so the long pollen grain is dominant the round pollen grain is recessive character these two are the homologous parents taken for the cross fertilization during the meiotic division they form the gametes but all the gametes are same type of gametes because those are uh, homologous parents uh, pollen grains are formed ovules are formed so pollen grain fused with the ovule during the fertilization and form the dihybrid heterozygous dominant that is blue purple long pollen grains this is dihybrid parent this f1 dihybrid heterozygous dominant parent is taken for the test cross this is the parent this is test crossed with the double recessive parent the first one is the double recessive parent this double recessive parent is just like a neutral parent because they can form only one type of gametes here these are the gametes only one type of gametes they can form but we have to observe this parent this is very important why they were choose the test cross In, on this observable parent two dominant genes are located on one chromosome two recessive genes are located on one chromosome according to the coupling principle if two dominant genes or two recessive genes located on the same chromosome they couple with each other and enter into the same gametes means these have to enter into the gametes as it is and they have to form the parental progenies but here in their experiment uh, this is capital r capital r capital r was same type of gametes and small r small r were, these are the gametes and crossing over took place at some place so these other two types of gametes are also formed here the genotypes formed in the next generation are blue purple long pollen grain are 192 from these gametes this parent is formed because the next homologous chromosome is same in all the organisms which is derived from the double recessive parent then next phenotype or genotype is blue purple with round pollen grains are 23 red flowers with long pollen grain with this genotype are 30 round flowers round pollen grains with this double recessive is 182 approximately equal to the first one so the ratio is minimized this is the 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 ratio has got from this coupling so the main observation is on this parent the f1 dihybrid parent while it is test crossing with the double recessive parent what type of gametes are forming so actually they are forming the uh, gametes with two dominant character two dominant characters and two recessive characters but in few of them also involved in the crossing over and formed these two types of gametes with these two type two types of gametes these two types of genotypes and phenotypes are formed but these genotypes and phenotypes are very less in number when compared with these two so Bateson and Punnett took these and this into the consideration and framed this coupling theory then we will see what is happening in the repulsion process in the repulsion two dominant are two recessive alleles if they are located on two different chromosomes they repel with each other they push away with each other uh, they are distracting 
and hating together and enter into the different and enter into the different gametes the ratio is different 1 is to 7 is to 7 is to 1 whereas in the coupling the ratio is 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 this is contrasting to that coupling oh, okay because the repulsion is opposite to the coupling uh, to prove the repulsion uh, Bateson and Pune to these two parents these two parents are different uh, these are also homozygous parents but each homozygous parent is uh, having two genes one is the dominant gene pair and the one is the recessive gene pair here also recessive gene pair and dominant gene pairs in between these two parents they allowed for cross fertilization uh, during the meiotic division they can form only one type of gametes because uh, uh, if the crossing over take place or without uh, without crossing over also only one type of gametes they can produce yes the, these gametes for example this is the pollen grain this is ovule uh, this pollen grain fused with this uh, ovule during the fertilization form the f1 dihybrid this is heterozygous dominant so here the main observation is in the coupling capital r and capital r were located on one chromosome small and small r and small r are located on one chromosome but here that is different this capital r two dominant characters are located on two different chromosomes as well as recessive character recessive uh, alleles are also located on two different chromosomes what will happen we will see f1 dihybrid is taken allowed for test cross with the double recessive parent uh, this double recessive parent can form only one type of gametes so need not to concentrate on this double recessive parent and its meiotic division because it can form only one type of gametes so the scientists were concentrated on this parent what type of gametes are going to be formed from this parent during the meiotic division whether the crossing over take place or not if the crossing over take place different types of gametes if there is no crossing over a parent and pro progenies have to be formed so what type of gametes are forming here in their experiment is one this is one type of gamete same like this this is another type of gamete same like this if the crossing over take place these two types of gametes are also formed in their experiment these two types of gametes are formed okay with uh, the fusion of the gamete the fusion of those gametes with all the gametes produced in this uh, fused with gamete of double recessive parent uh, this is the next generation progeny in this next generation progeny however this uh, the ratio in this case is 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 this is not the correct series of ratio this result of repulsion has to be compared with the result of coupling then we will see what will be the correct ratio same series has to be taken blue long pollen grain blue round pollen grain red long and the red round these are 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 this is experiment 1 this is taken here experiment 1 in the experiment 1 that is the coupling experiment the ratio is 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7 these are the phenotypes now these phenotypes formed in the repulsion has to be arranged under these phenotypes then blue long how many blue long these are the blue long how many only one one blue round how many blue round are these how many seven red round how many one this is red round one then red long how many seven these are seven now the compare the experiment one and experiment two experiment one is the coupling experiment two is the repulsion in the coupling these are majority formed from the coupled genes these are two these are taken into consideration majority of the organisms these are formed from the repulsion where is that repulsion we'll see this 7 and 7 are this one and this one these two are in majority 
these are these two are the majority individuals in this fa in this population how did this majority population are formed these are formed from this one and this one how did these gametes are formed these gametes are formed from here uh, these two are not involved in the crossing over why they were not involved in the crossing over because these two dominant alleles two recessive alleles pushed away with each other they did not come close to each other so they did not participate in the crossing over they were repelled enter into different gametes that's why these two phenotypes are more in this population during the coupling process at the time of test cross the f1 dihybrid with the double recessive parent that is capital r capital dominant genes these two are the recessive genes they formed these two types of gametes this one and this one these two types of gametes are these two these gametes formed 192 182 majority of the individuals are formed from these gametes then the next question is how do these gametes are formed these gametes are not these gametes are formed by not involving in the crossing over why they were not involved in the crossing over they don't want to involved in the crossing over because they are linked with each other are coupled with each other these are coupled genes they don't they love with each other they don't want to hate they don't want to separate that's why these two gametes are formed these two phenotypes are majority in this population so according to this results bateson and punnett said that if two dominant alleles are two recessive alleles located on the same chromosome they couple with each other they love with each other they enter into the same gametes and form the parental progenies that's it then in the repulsion the f1 dihybrid crossed with the double recessive parent here the two dominant genes as well as two recessive genes are located on two different chromosomes they formed these uh, gametes as it is this gamete as it is this gamete focus on these two gametes how many number of individuals are formed from these two gametes these are the two gametes they formed the population from this gamete seven from this gamete seven again majority of the individuals are blue round and red long in this repulsion process how did this uh, parental progeny are formed these are formed from these gametes how did these gametes are formed these gametes are formed without involving in the crossing over because they repelled with each other why did they repel with each other because they are located on the different chromosomes that is repulsion process that's why if two two dominant alleles are two recessive alleles located on different chromosomes they repel with each other and enter into the different gametes that is the repulsion process so according to the bateson and punnett in this way the genes are alleles located on the parental chromosomes can be inherited to the next generation that is coupling and repulsion hypothesis